Hey everyone, welcome back to Alan Wake 2. As always, thank you for watching. Last time, we went into the overlap chasing after this old fucker who was bamboozled by Cynthia's wiles. We put down Cynthia, we got him back, and we gotta find out why he was so important. Let me know what you thought of what they did to Cynthia, because they did her dirty, but we dealt with it. We put her down, we got him back, and there was some reason that it was so important that he be taken into the overlap. I'm sure it has to do with being an Anderson, like Odin and myself, or like Saga, but, um, you know, why him specifically? But we also got to check back with Alan's perspective, so we're going to do that at the next opportunity. But let's see what this guy has to say for himself. We need to talk. <sighs> Damn right. Lots for me to explain. But not here. The night's got ears. We can have our talk in your head. You have a room there, right? How do you know about that? I'm your grandfather. <laughs> what don't I know? Might as well have a psychic conversation if we can do that. Okay, now... Is, is this still sunset? Or, like, did... Were things just extra weird because of what was going on with the overlap, or did we make it through the night and this is sunrise? I hear birds, so I feel like it's actually daytime now, and he doesn't need to worry so much, but oh well. And I gotta see if I can get back to Watery somehow, and the Bright Falls area itself, because I know I missed some stashes, and I want to make sure I pick all those up. But there's been very few times when the game has actually led us to... This is not the way. Oh. I just thought I'd uh, use the bolt cutters to open that real quick. The game has only led us to that lodge in Bright Falls where the car is parked a handful of times, so... I guess what we gotta do first is talk to Tor in here. Uh, and see what's new on the case board as well. Anger's Remorse mentions the man I drove away. What man did Tor drive away? My father. Area around an overlap is always flooded. Right. Oh, that's right. We can go back down to Billy's Boatyard now. Does the overlap cause the flooding? I entered the dark place by playing Torinodin's song. Overlaps require pieces of art to enter. Is that because of the dark place's focus on art? A song about remorse, a float about murder, a poem about terror. Yeah. And these are still for later. Okay. Let's have a chat with Tor. The Mind Place. You know about my Mind Place? How is that possible? We all have the power. Find the truth. Damn right I do. Odin already told you you're a seer. You can gaze into their heads, see the truth. See past the lies. Past this bullshit horror story. Us Andersons aren't bound by it. You can fight it. Don't be the story. Make the story. It's true. I am a seer. I have a power. My mind place is more than I thought it was. This isn't my intuition. It's way more I'm than that. <laughs> Is this why I know the truth about Logan? While well, everyone else forgot? If the FBC realized that Saga was also a para-utilitarian, they probably would have grabbed her too. You said you were my grandfather. If that's true, why wasn't I told about you? You were part of our fucked up family. 
Way before this horror story. I was a shitty fucking dad to Freya. Your mom didn't deserve that. Not one bit. Things were said and done. Not a day goes by I haven't regretted it. But that fucking father of yours didn't make things any easier. I know Freya is gone. So I need to apologize to you. I am sorry, Sokka. I can see he's sorry. Mom said she didn't want anything to do with my grandfather. And that my father died before I could remember. It all matches. Tor and Odin are part of my family. Mom wouldn't talk about my father. Some doors are better left closed. Your dad was a complicated bastard. Always thinking too many steps ahead. That's not how we work. There was trouble, and then he was gone. I didn't handle it well. Freya didn't want anything to do with me after that. I can't blame her. I never knew my dad or my mom's family. So many broken relationships in my past. I won't lose mine. With Logan. With David. Who I is David? Until they're safe. We don't know a thing about him. And they still aren't actually saying what the problem was. They just keep saying... There was trouble. You said you were a shitty father to my mom. Is that why she left? Freya never looked back. My girl was strong. Freya always thought our powers had a dangerous side. Odin and me did fuck with things that should not have been fucked with. Your mom had common sense. She raised you right. Kept you safe. I'm not surprised she didn't tell you about the Anderson power. She was always protecting me. Whenever I told my mom about my mind place, she called it make believe. <laughs> I wish she'd been more honest with me. At least towards the end. And what do you know about the clicker? I have the clicker. Get your guitar roaring, and your drums crashing. Blow reality's eardrum. <laughs> Just the light switch isn't enough. It's Tom's story we're dealing with, so he's got to be the one to rewrite it. After that's done, he can flick that switch to bring the whole thing home, baby. I can't use the clicker without Wake. Tom. Meaning Wake. He needs to rewrite the story first. I can't stop the horror story without him. That was something I was a little confused about from the first game. Um, if you if you know how this all works, like, were Alan and Tom the same person? Like, was Alan a reincarnation of Tom? I didn't quite get if there was a concrete answer to that. The clicker acts like an amplifier. Uh, let's see. The clicker. So Wake writes a story, and the dark place makes it change reality, and the clicker amplifies that change, making it permanent. Makes sense. So because Wake wrote the story, only Wake can edit it. Wake needs to be the one to rewrite the ending. Hmm. And I'll need to keep an eye on him. So in the first game, Alan was able to change reality, but he wasn't in the dark place at that point, right? But Thomas Zane was. So I, I guess is that how it works? He's a, You have to be in the dark place for it to work. And because like this other version of Alan was in the dark place, that's how it... 
I got a little turned around by how by how things worked in the first game. Um, let's see. Mom thought Taurus power was dangerous, didn't want me around it. Oh, so it wasn't just it wasn't just oh there was family drama. She really thought they the way they were using the Anderson power was super dangerous. Tor and my father had problems, there was trouble. Freya took me away after that. The way Tor behaved? I'm surprised my mom hung around for as long as she did. But we still but don't genuinely sorry. But we still don't know anything about how he behaved. He was reckless and there was trouble. Like that's what we know. Our family is not bound by Wake's story. The Andersons can see through the horror story. Right, they're immune somehow. This would explain why my memories haven't changed like everyone else. Okay. The story. Nope, that's all for later. Fact versus fiction. Those are for later, and the Anderson brothers. Case closed. Wake wrote Logan into the story. He had no right to use her like this. There is still time to make him fix it. I won't give him a choice. But there must have been a reason that he did that. Wake fucking wrote Logan into the story. She's in danger because of him within Scratch's reach. I need Wake, I need Wake to write an ending that will save her. I mean, you know he realizes that you can't just write whatever you want, everything comes with a cost? Is that why he picked this random... Well, I guess it wasn't random. He knew about... He knew Tor and Odin. Maybe he knew about Saga being their, being their granddaughter and knew that he needed to do something, like, connected with them. But why was Tor so important to the Dark Presence? Tor is here, in the overlap. Gotta find him and get the fuck out. Oh, that's old. Okay. Okay. I think that's... I think everything else is, uh... is old. I mean, for later, so... Okay. Thanks for telling me this, Tor. I need to go find Wake. To stop this. The old gods of Asgard will be ready to help. Hell yeah. Me and my bro will... Bring the rock when you need it. Remember, your daughter is alive. Just kept from you by this bullshit horror story. I needed to hear that. Hmm. Thanks, Grandpa. Don't worry about me, kiddo. I'll drag my sorry ass over to Odin. <laughs> Two shots of the Anderson's finest. I mean, I wasn't offering to help, soon, but uh, glad, glad to hear the that. The FBC is holding Wake at the sheriff station. Oh. I need to make Agent Estevez understand. They have Wake, and I have the clicker. We have to work together to stop this. Bright Falls Station. New case. Get the clicker to Wake, and make him fix his attempt to play God. That's the plan. But the FBC have him. I don't think it's gonna work that way. He's not just he's not just playing God. Like he's trying to stop the dark presence from getting out and doing all this stuff again. And he probably knows how his writing process works, uh, how his how his power works better. Well, we can open this. If only I could remember where all those old bolt cutter doors were. <laughs> oh, wait. This way. And there are three stashes over here and Billy's boatyard. Uh, but we are going to visit those next time. I want to get back to Alan for now. So if I...
at least if I can find, I'm not sure if it's every, I don't think every save room has a uh, puddle in it, but uh, I'll look around and if I don't see one, then we'll just keep doing this. Yeah, like this save room is not in a janitor's closet, so um, I don't think there is a janitor's closet in this whole building, so never mind, we will keep going. <laughs> We got some stashes to find, and we got the boatyard to explore. Well, they've all moved on. Is the wellness center okay now? Is it fixed? Is it not haunted anymore now that we've... There's some more... Setter for mayor stuff. Vote mayor Setter to sit in office. There's just so much normal still going on that you just have to wonder. Like, the lodge just got attacked by a group of gunmen, you know? There's still people acting like things are fine. What's this? Hmm. I wonder if there were any... Were there any bolt doors in this place? No, I don't think so. Then... We'll get out of here. Okay, which way? Okay, we'll just loop back around. Oh, can I use this to... I guess that's not my car. I didn't drive here, so I guess it would make sense that I can't just take somebody's car. <laughs> didn't know if maybe they would put that kind of fast travel stuff in other places also. Maybe this gate opens now. Probably not. Yeah. All right, let's just circle back around, uh, back around then the way we came. Oh, it's not safe now. Should probably heal. <laughs> now that I've spent almost all of my ammo, most of my healing. So embarrassed about Cynthia's fight. Like I was, I'm so used to Dark Souls games that I just sort of assume that the dodge button gives you iframes, and that wasn't how it worked. You have to actually dodge. So I know from previously that the Taken don't necessarily wait till it's full-blown nighttime. They will get a little spicy, you know, all the time. Potentially, not all the time, but you know, it doesn't have to be totally dark. Oh, sorry.
Why are they letting Pat still have a radio show? God, that's so depressing. Let's check out the boatyard first. They need to take Pat's radio away. <laughs> What's been lurking in Billy's boatyard? I mean, it's sunrise, right? It's beautiful. It means nothing bad can happen. Hmm. Ooh, we got lunchbox. Another Alex Casey lunchbox. And a page. Rose receives a message. Rose woke up from another dream from her idol. Another message. All through her morning routine, she was humming happily. So happily, she realized she was starting to forget what Alan had told her. Something about a hero who would come to save them all. And the hero... Rose frowned. This won't do, Rose Marigold. You know better than to forget. Something about knitwear. The hero... liked it? Rose nodded, determined. She'd use the knitwork to guide the hero to the secret stash as she had hid in the forest to help them. Knitwear to mark the spot. Alan will love that, she thought. Now she only needed the knitwork. Rose thought hard. Mandy May was always knitting. Mandy May would help her. Truly the successor to Cynthia. The woods were dark. I held my breath. I could hear heavy footsteps out among the trees. I was scared. My heart beat in my chest like a small bird fluttering against its cage. I shivered. I was cold, too. I saw a shape emerge from the trees. It was a menacing, large shape. A bad shape. It looked at me with evil, glowing eyes. I gasped. No, it had seen me. It growled and lurched toward me. I ran. I ran and ran and ran until running became too hard to do. I couldn't run anymore, so I stopped running. I could feel the monster's hot breath on my neck. I was too afraid to turn around. It was about to get me. I was a goner for sure. I ran again. I had never been so scared, not ever. This was the end. I wished someone, anyone, would come to save me. Is she trying to emulate uh, Wake's power? Just see what happens if she writes a story and tries to make it happen? That's why she's writing a story where Wake is uh, the hero who comes to save her, just like, I don't know, all her, all her fantasies. <laughs> I keep getting trolled by all these clues that are just for later. New with another lunchbox. Bright Falls. Still missing four lunchboxes. Uh, I think we need...
actually, I don't remember um, what I was going to try to get next. But, oh, yeah, ready for more was the one I was really looking forward to. I think we got to go with increased reload on the shotgun, though. In one fluid motion, Saga cracked open the shotgun, sending the empty hulls flying over her shoulder and slammed the new shells in faster than she'd imagined possible. Because that's been the one thing that it's always a little bit awkward to have something in your face and you got to keep dodging and dodging resets the reload and be nice to have it not take so long. Hmm. All right, what's around here? Boatyard. Nothing on the map. This doesn't open. Anything at this water tower thing? Oh, well, here's a container. Hmm. Not much here. Well, there's a couple of loot boxes. And a cooler over here. Well, there's this mysterious looking shed with a five on it. Two fives. Two fives. Well, we can see there's stuff in there. Okay, there's two fives. What else? Oh, there's actually a bunch of fives. There's five fives. Oh, and I can pick this up. Monster doll. Is there a rhyme around here? Oh, yeah, there is. Nice. Holy shit. Bright Falls is right here. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize how close we were. It's literally right there. The lodge that we were at. Yeah, it's all right there. <laughs> More of those rhymes. So I can probably go back to Watery pretty easily to look for that missing stash. Five little monsters out on the sea, competing to see who the winner will be. They rocked their boats to find out who floats until one little monster did fall. Mama called out to the sea and cried, and the sea she replied, On the bottom they will rot if they will not stop rocking their boats. Okay. Well, the monster could go in the boat. Or in the sea. Because there were a bunch of monsters, and most of them were in boats, but one of them fell in. But it does say Mama called out to the sea, so maybe if we put the mother on the sea. That's it. Hey. So what happened there?
Hmm. Oh. Follow the trail of goop. Oh, I hear. Oh, I see. <laughs> Hello. You don't even look like you have a darkness shield. You don't. <laughs> that was pretty good. Just in time, too. Damn it. That was close. <laughs> I do like the quicker reload. I'm a fan. Oh, damn it. Use my own dodge against me. <laughs> Shut up. I'm never going to get used to this. Your cult sucks. I wonder why only one of them actually had a darkness um, shield. Unfortunately, none of them dropped bullets. Anyhow, where did that trail go off next? Here. Over here. Lots of charms lying around here. Anchor charm, chance to stun on flashlight boost. More health, more resources, more hand flare duration. Maybe I'll try Anchor Charm instead of Hand Flare Charm since I don't even have any flares. And I'm just assuming that uh, investigate the flooded area means find literally everything, every pickup, every collectible. Uh, so I don't know if we'll be focusing on doing that every time. But I think we got the main stuff done there. We found the nursery rhyme. And we see a few stashes to pick up. So let's investigate the rest of these woods over here. And then, of course, there's that one right by the Bright Falls um, Lodge. Is the frame rate um, acting a little weird at the moment? I don't know. It seems a little bit janky for some reason. I'm not sure what's up with that. I might be imagining it though. Oh, here's another thing. Oh, another rhyme. Giant bear. What is it about children and their stuff that if you put it in just a different context, it becomes so creepy? I'm not seeing any other dolls laying around, so... But, with a look. <laughs> to the beach a child went, wandering pretty, shiny rocks she's gathering, but from the water a monster rose, a horrible beast with a pointy nose, a flapping wing and dragging toes. But the child was wrong, it was her mother all along, on a boat grabbing a towel that's already gone. 
That's an interesting ending. Child. Well, the monster came from the water. Which one of these would be the beach? A child went wandering, gathering shiny rocks. Hmm. Oh. Try the boat? No, the mother was on the boat. The child. Oh, shiny things would be that one, yeah. Gasp. I hear something over there. I got something for you. Oh, two of these at once. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Fuck. I don't have a flare. <laughs> Damn it. Fuck off. <laughs> they are strong. Okay, I'll put a magnet bolt on them and The child was right, it was a monster. <laughs> oh, that one died. I didn't even realize. I s I think that did it. <laughs> Charm. My bracelet. The, the child was right. <laughs> Valhalla Nursing Home Charm. Oh, healing stuff is better? I mean, that might be better than more max health. Hmm. I'm gonna replace max health with healing stuff is better. Although it does uh, hurt a little bit. To see, to see my max health go down. Maybe I should wear both. Alright. Now that I'm even more depleted of ammo, let's keep going. see ranger station up here I really was thinking I would just like almost immediately find a spot to um, just switch back to Alan in the dark place but we do have to do this too so ranger station bright falls I thought I saw one of those knitwork things for a second, but I didn't. I hear somebody up there. I see him too. But I'm trying to find the path up to this house here. Oh, here it is.
I'm surprised they're able to operate this openly in daylight, though. Like, the sun's up now. Oh. This doesn't look like something a screwdriver will work on. Never mind. <laughs> it looked a little too substantial for a screwdriver, but I hope the ranger's not home. It looks, Another one of those rhymes. looks pretty lived in. A child needs their mother to keep them safe, and a home is their hiding place, because outside the monsters roam and chase. When they ring your doorbell, don't yell, don't tell them to go away, give them treats, and pray they won't rock your house down to the ground. Cool. Uh, and we're in a house now, so I bet something will be waiting outside. Uh, the mother's what's capitalized, so I'm going to say mother's what goes in the home. And the monsters... The monsters go somewhere. Treats? Keep trying. Hmm. I was sure that was right. Give them treats. Hmm. The monsters roam and chase. I mean, gonna go in the eye or try the monster everywhere. <laughs> nope. It's not gonna be this one. No. I mean, I guess the. Doesn't make sense. What if the mother goes on like like she's watching out for her kid? No. <laughs> what if the child goes in the house? Oh shit. Nobody's home. <laughs> Nobody's home. I'm gonna answer the door anyway. I'm no punk bitch. I got a crossbow for you. Hello? Oh, I don't like that. Oh. They're already inside. Love that. Let's go. Jump scare out of the bathtub. Let's do it. It's going to be when I leave again, isn't it? Ah. Yeah, the footprints go back out now. Ah. Never have too many charms. Another coffee mug charm. I haven't used a single one of those. I still feel like it's not over. <laughs> Something else is gonna happen. <laughs> Might as well get it over with though. Never mind, I guess it was over. <laughs> Test sites and Bright Falls. Okay, we got the Ranger Station one. Bunker Woods. Boatyard. I think we got one in the boatyard and maybe one in Bunker Woods and one at the Ranger Station. Um, so I think I, there must be one more in the woods. Test sites and Bright Falls. We got the ranger cabin. We got the shoreline. And the pier. 
Found all the nursery rhymes in Bright Falls. Cool. And the monster doll goes up here. Oh, I think we're only missing one doll now. But based on where it is, I'm wondering if we missed, like we already passed by where it was. Hmm. Manning your stations, it's come to my attention that both of you have left your posts on several occasions while on duty to gallivant around town on personal business. This is unacceptable, you're under strict FBC protocols regarding covertness and confidentiality, and as your supervisor, I am responsible for your conduct at all times. If you find the work boring, too bad. You are to fulfill your roles and duties as I see fit and as the project requires. I'm changing your posts. I'll be overseeing the watery area and it, as it now has the most test sites to cover. The ranger cabin there will be my base of operations. Vega, you are moving to Cauldron Lake's Witchfinder Station. Michaels, you are staying in the Bright Falls Station. Hmm. Dr. Campbell acknowledged and understood. That goes for the both of us, Michaels and me. It really was not gallivanting, as you put it, though, as I was attacked by some rabid animal out there in the woods, and Michaels helped me get medical attention in town. You should know all that if you read your messages, of course. In any case, orders received. Hmm. Yeah, we definitely got to get back to Watery. But for now, we got to check out these other... Oh, I see a safe haven up there. We got a little bit more to check out up here. Anything out here besides a great view? Oh, what's what's this page? Costco is breaking into the FBC lab. When the government seized the land around Cauldron Lake and set up their laboratory there, Hilmo Koskola knew they knew something. Together with his brother, they felt obliged to take a look inside. The Federal Bureau of Control Security was a joke. The Costalists walked in delivering really? coffee. Back in Watery, they poured over the stack of files they grabbed. The FBC was researching something in the lake, something they called the Shadow. Everyone who went into the lake came back a monster. Hartman had gone into the lake. He'd come back bad. The FBC had captured him, interrogated him. Based on his ratings, Barbara Jagger had gone into the lake as far back as the 60s. She'd come back bad. The writer, Alan Wake, had gone into the lake. He'd faced Jagger, pushed some mystic light switch into a hole in her chest, flicked a switch, and gotten rid of her. If Wake ever came back, he was bound to be bad as well. Oh, shit. And all the stuff about coming back bad is an edit that's written in there. Yeah. Bodes poorly for um, finding Wake okay at the sheriff's station. Because we've never actually met Scratch. So Scratch is probably, like, possessing Wake or something, right? And a wolf! Holy shit. One down. 
two to go. <laughs> a twin enemy and a wolf. And I have almost no ammo. Oh, fuck off. I mean, this is kind of scuffed. I have basically zero of anything left. But I'm gonna see what happens. <laughs> If I just, like, run past everything, then maybe... Holy shit, I hear another one. I just gotta make a dash for it. Because I have no idea what else to do. I gotta make a run for it. I'm not fighting two wolves and another enemy with zero ammo. Because <laughs> there's literally no way to do that. <laughs> Question is, what did I skip? I skipped two stashes. What if I go back down? Will they be, like, reset back where they were? No, I hear at least one of the wolves. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's that thing. It's that cabin. I'm gonna see if that is like some kind of save spot that I can use. Maybe it has supplies in it. Well, it's not a save spot. But it had a little bit of supplies. Oh, there is a, it is a save spot. There's a generator out there. Question is, can I live long enough to fire it up? Oh yeah, we're fine. I think we're fine. Oof, we're fine. I almost didn't want to save because saving with zero, like, no supplies left, would that have been better than, like, going back to... <laughs> To whatever I was at before. Bright Falls manuscript pages. The 81st annual Deer Fest was just around the corner. Everyone in Bright Falls was bustling. There were banners to be hung, pies baked, deer mass sold. Bright Falls had made the top 100 American small town list for its modest rustic charm. The town expected a lot of tourists this year, but a shadow hung over the Deer Fest preparations. The forecast promised rain. Fearful whispers promised more murders. The police were on high alert. Sheriff Breaker had deputies patrolling the streets at night. Bright Falls was no stranger to odd happenings. But to cancel Deerfest? Out of the question. The townsfolk were anxious. Their anticipation mixed with fear. People had restless dreams. The lights seemed dimmer. Floodwater pressed in on the town. And the shadows poured in with it. This is a... I mean, it has been a much more relaxed episode compared to... I mean, after what happened in the last couple of episodes. So, that's just how pacing goes sometimes. But We're chilling, we're exploring the previously flooded area. And we do now have a way to get back to the dark place. Um... So, the question is, 
I can't fight all that stuff with what I have left. But there are still three cult stashes here. I'm not really sure what we're going to do about that. So in the meantime, we're going to switch back to Alan. So, we're going back into Parliament Tower. I uh, have a shit ton of flare gun ammo. I think in general I like Alan's loadout better, except the revolver is not, I don't think, as good as the pistol, but in general I feel like Alan has better stuff at his disposal. And I still have so many questions, like, Sheriff Tim, why did Mr. Dorr transport him in here? And if he could do that, why can't he just transport us out? There it is. Last time it was actually a very brief visit, so I'm not sure how it's going to go this time. It's going to be similar. Anybody home? All right, let's go. Are we gonna meet Alice? Are we gonna meet Barry? I mean, I'm assuming we're gonna get another video um, from Alice. Uh. Go to hell. Return, initiation at six. Yeah, we know that Alice was setting up this equipment to take pictures of Scratch, but I'm still kind of thinking maybe Scratch is like cohabitating with Alan the whole time. That Alan really is like the Alan that got out with Saga. Maybe that is Scratch. And what is with the swirly on some of these doors? I needed to get inside the manuscript. Because this one's locked too, and so was the one in the nursing home. had turned the bathroom into a dark room. Wow, spacious bathroom. In a New York City apartment, the bathroom is this big? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, shit. And she's got a... That's, that's what they show when I die as Alan. On the top there? Damn. And so, what, this whole time Scratch is living in this apartment with her? Yikes. Oh, emails from Barry. Hey, Alice, I'm more a fish out of water in Hollywood than I ever was in the Pacific Northwest wilderness. These yuppies with their glow-in-the-dark teeth couldn't be more fake if they had six fingers. And everything is so fucking great all the time, even when it's in fact the opposite. More than once I've thrown up in my mouth during meetings with these movie exec jerks. But I gotta be here to look after Al's legacy. Everyone wants to gobble up the film rights for the Casey books, and they have moronic ideas of what to do with them. It's my duty to herd this horde of tanned zombies into the general direction of something resembling good taste. I'm painfully aware of how deeply Al would have hated adaptations if they didn't do justice to his vision. He was a master of hating things deeply, for good reasons. I mean, that's why we loved him so much, right? 
Anyway, gotta hop on another video call now to talk about casting. Your pal, Barry. <laughs> hey, Alice, you're gonna think I've been replaced by an evil double, but I've joined a cult and I love it. <laughs> Joking about it being a cult, kind of. Blessed wellness retreat. Working with Al or the Andersons was tough sometimes, but these movie biz types are insane. My stress levels were through the roof, but then I was tipped off about the retreat. The best decision I ever made. I have never felt this good and, well, healthy. The guy who runs this place, Chester, is a goddamn miracle worker, not a wacko in any way. I know you think I'm full of shit, but I have lost a ton of weight. You wouldn't recognize me. Chester says I'm lucky to have ended up here, that something bad would have happened to me if I'd stayed in New York. I believe him. I wasn't feeling great after everything that happened, especially after those FBC creepos wanted to chat with me. Enough to turn anyone into a conspiracy nut. I hope you're good over there. Come visit any time. West Coast is not as bad as I made it sound in my earlier mails. Hey Alice, checking in because I haven't heard from you. Everything good back there? I've been trapped in non-stop meetings with no breaks. Open kimono. I have considered peeing in a mug and lunches be damned. How these people ever get a movie made when all they do is sit in meetings is beyond me. Hey Alice, sharks circling. They now want to turn what happened to Al into a movie and or a TV show and or, get this, a fucking video game. I told them to fuck off. Fourth wall. It's so meta. <laughs> also, in case you hear about this from someone else, a true crime writer named Tammy Booker is working on a book about Al. I had to down her publisher and told them we'll sue. Hmm. I don't think it worked. I don't think it put her off. Hey, Alice, everything good with you back home? Just checking in. Tried to call but couldn't reach you. You are probably just deep in your creative process. I know how you artists get when you're in the middle of your projects. Everything else disappears. If you call back and can't reach me, I'm doing whatever it is an executive producer is supposed to do. Still a mystery to me. Oh, and if you want to help, if you want me to help with anything business related to your exhibition, just say the word. Yeah, I don't know what they do either. I know they, like, make, they have all the power to say no to things. That's all I know. <laughs> what is going on in here? Oh, hi. Motion activated TVs. started visiting. He even cooked me meals. I couldn't stand the guy when I first met him, but he's a better friend than I gave him credit for. And he still checks in. Even after he moved out west. Barry is awesome. <laughs> hmm. Trigger when viewer something hmm love is weakness what has Alice been doing damn seen that face a few times Alice's work had consumed the apartment her whole life Need to show you the truth on all screens. Oh? The darker, the better. And there's four X's. Okay, well that looks like it's that one. And then there's one right around the corner here, and one in those two rooms off in the corner. Clarity is purpose. Oh, that's part three. Um, part two must be in here. One morning, I saw a deer 
door past my bedroom window. It was a, a balloon of some cartoon animal. And I looked out at the street below, and I saw a little girl crying. Like losing that balloon had just ended her whole world. Oof. And that's when I got myself out of bed. And I picked up my camera. Damn. Weakness is clarity. And then we got part three. became obsessive, but I still had no idea what I was looking for. Okay. Love is weakness. Weakness is clarity. Clarity is purpose. Hmm. What is purpose? Purpose is strength. Oh. That's ominous. Alice wasn't the only one with a message for us, I think. Swirly door. escaping from the dark place, taking over Bright Falls. I couldn't remember writing it. I had not written it. I would never write this. I knew who had. Scratch. A monster with my face. If this story came true, Scratch would get out. People would die. Destroying the manuscript, it wouldn't stop it from happening. I would have to fix it. Edit it. I could not change the genre of the story. I'd have to work within the constraints set by Scratch. I needed someone in the story to fight the darkness. Saga Anderson. I kept seeing her in my visions. She was already in Bright Falls, already involved, but she was not in return. Not yet. I'd write her in. Try to stop Scratch within the limits of the horror story. It was almost impossible. It was taking too long. I had not reached the end. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. 
I know like this has been like a relatively chill like low action episode but I'm still loving like I love the every time we're fed a little bit more of the story and the background and the reasoning of why is this and why is that and this is what happens like I love it Saga's wrong about Alan right she thought that he wrote well sort of Alan found a total manuscript written by scratch and is like I gotta edit this so that it happens differently and I guess this whole time we thought that Alan was the one with the manuscript and Scratch was the one editing it, but it's it's Alan changing it to try to save everyone. And he did involve Saga and her family, but it's because he had to. He has to to try to save Brightfall. And then Scratch walks in and shoots him. Like, what the hell? What's happening? And then we stop me before I could finish my edits to the manuscript. And then we're back the memory here. Of my edits was already fading. Terrible things would happen if the manuscript came true. Scratch was there at Parliament Tower undoing my work. He could use the story to escape. He could go after Alice. Damn. So Alan is just looping in here. And he's making edits to make the story happen differently. Oh, but this time, this time we did not get this whole plot board reset. It still says initiation draft two. I needed a new draft of the story, one that would get me ahead of scratch. So I think we're about to start over in the TV studio again, only this time it will be different again. Let's see what happens. Zane had said we worked on Return together. That was a lie. Scratch wrote Return. I would pay Zane another visit. He had guided me to two murder sites. Oh, that's right. I needed a new one to get back to Parliament Tower. A new draft of initiation. Okay, it is going to start draft three. Okay. Now the studio's flooded. Masks initiation seven. I don't see how they could outdo um, the, the musical from last time. It could not be opened on the side. Hmm. And here is another spot to switch back, but we got to keep this one going. We got to keep this one going. Are we finally going to get some straight talk from Mr. Door? I don't have time for this, so let's get over with. Tell me, was this all fake? A show? No one said otherwise, Mr. Blake. It was to indulge you, but we can stop pretending now. The masks come off. I don't even think you know who's under your mask, but you know how to make things difficult for yourself. All these rules, endless convoluted loops you insist on going through. You 
I still love you. You know? There are so many people helping you. Armies of people. Myself. to get to her. She's in danger. She is. Because of you. And so is someone important to me. Someone you pulled into this. You keep opening doors. Peeking in. Reaching through to get what you want and that puts you in my path. I don't know what you're talking about. I have to go now. Maybe you will make it through this time. This has gone on long enough. This and our night springs were the last distraction. It's time someone gave me a straight answer here. Seriously. The next time we meet, the circumstances will be very different. That's not a straight answer. Shit. The masks were finally coming off. Was it a sign I was closer to escaping? I had no time to waste. My first thought was, is Mr. Door David? Like we just said, well, I just said that we know nothing about David. I can't remember if we've actually heard his voice or anything, but who would he be talking about? That I mean, the people Alan pulled in are Saga and her and her daughter. And they keep talking about trouble between the Andersons and Saga's... Oh, no, 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 no. Saga's partner is David, sorry. Her dad is Mr. Dor, Saga's father, is what I meant to say. And, uh, sorry, my mic was, uh... I got up to use the bathroom and, uh, my mic was rotated away from my face. Thankfully, that didn't go on super long before I realized it. Does Saga's father run the whole FBC? I guess I should probably keep the flashlight off to not draw their attention, but at the same time, I want to keep it on, because when I draw their attention, I want to be able to stun them. The door wouldn't open. Anything different about these places? Ugh. I don't have wake. a clue? How rude. Alan, wake. You're stuck in a loop. Listen, buddy. Wake. If you've got nothing constructive to say. Alan, wake. Wake. How about Mr. Door's room? This book is still here. Hmm. If Mr. Door was just helping carry on some charade, then why was Alex Casey there too? Rule of threes, will this be the uh, third and final time doing this loop? Oh. Wake. 
It's Artie. Pretty sure Ati really is like, he's like this universe's version of Tom Bombadil from Lord of the Rings. He's just separate and just this all-powerful separate being who just sort of knows everything and just kind of laughs at all the shit going on. <laughs> happy to see me this time. Fearing Tomasa is the root of wisdom. But don't let the game get you down. He's playing his role. Maybe put him in your films, Tom. Like you have put me. Sehän <laughs> olis. What films? <laughs> I'm a fan of your masterworks. Uh, there is Tom the Poet. My favorite, and Uerden Ue is the most famous one, of course. And is it true what I hear that it's coming back to cinemas? Is there a that's, bottom to this rumor? That's what we, um, that last one he said, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Um, that's what there was that clip of, that reel in the basement of Valhalla. I need to get back to my apartment. Can you help me? Well, plan is half done. You asked me to make sure you won't forget the... Mikä se valokuva oli? The light pictures. The photos you artist wife took. Uh, they are waiting in the shoebox in the basement. What you oh. leave behind, you find in front of you. Okay. Thanks, Adi. Such wisdom. <laughs> well, this is open now. I, 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 I'm looking for bar to sing Ute and Ue in the cinema. <laughs> but first, I work. And the work won't end even when you do it, Perke. Ah, I see that. One potato at a time. One Some potato at a time. The brave will eat the pea soup. Remember that, kids. One potato at a time. Uh, let's see. I'm going to... Uh, basement shortcut. Let's go. I heard one of those little uh, shadow guys say uh, the story was never yours which sounds like just a generic like spooky thing to whisper at somebody but now we know no literally it was scratches it's like scratch wrote the story <laughs> I forget is there any point to don't remember if there was any point to actually changing this um, the shoebox is right there. Alice's photographs. I think we actually need that turned on to open that path through. So, and we can head down. I think we can. Oh, that's not right. That leads over to this exit over here. I need a way down here, back this way. Except it's different now. Maybe, maybe I do need to uh, grab this in order to change something out here. Oh yeah, make this appear. I would find Alice's photos in a shoebox. 
I mean, we found them all over the apartment. Is there something new in them? Yes. Basement storage. I need to... Oh, here we go. This whole angel lamp thing. I think they said this was Zane's lamp, and I think Cynthia's journal or something said that it suddenly became missing someday. How did we get a hold of it? These were Alice's photos. I recognized the style. One showed the clicker sinking into darkness. The other showed a light in the shape of a bullet. They were important, even if I didn't know what to do with them yet. Hmm. And now we escape the studio. Well, we have an exit. Um... Why am I thinking that all these shadows are going to turn out to be more than just generic filler? Like, it's gonna matter that... It's gonna matter what they are, somehow. Like, I don't know, maybe they're all me, or... Something like that. shoebox on the map, but, uh, end of part. There we have it. That brings us to the end of this episode, but I know it was, uh, not exactly like an action-packed episode. Personally, I just really enjoy all the story-focused bits too, um, so I hope you do too. Like, the pacing of how they're delivering the story, I think, has been really good. Of learning more about what Alan is doing and what Scratch is doing and how it, like, how it works. What are the rules of this game? And, I mean, the game that they're playing, not, not the game that I'm playing. Anyway, we are finally getting some straight talk. Well, not really straight talk from Mr. Door, but he's finally not pretending anymore. And he's still talking a little vaguely, but at least we're getting a little bit more recognition of the role that he's playing and who he is. I'm pretty sure, I mean, official guess is that he's Saga's father and he runs the FBC. <laughs> Which would also e explain, I mean, I, I, I think they would probably be investigating this stuff anyway, but would explain why he is personally involved the way he, that he is. I think that, uh, Judging by the the upgrades that we've gotten on Saga and Alan, I would roughly guess that we're like definitely over halfway through the game, but doesn't quite feel like we're in end game yet, so I'm not sure. We have to go back and explore some other areas again as Saga. Unfortunately, she's a little bit crippled at the moment with like zero, almost zero ammo, and you know. Uh, you can't do much with that. I think maybe exploring that area right after doing a boss fight maybe just left us in a bad position there. But anyway, I hope that you are enjoying this game. I thank you again for watching this episode. I hope you join me next time for Alan Wake 2. See you.